everybody. Hey, this is uh, this is Pastor Keith Jones, Life Restoration Church. I just want to take a moment to welcome you and thank all of you for sharing this moment with me on our virtual Bible study on tonight. Uh, I pray that all is well with you. I pray that all is going well. I pray that most of you that are home, staying home, that you're safe, that you're well, that you're healthy, that you're doing all the essential things that you need to do. And then all of our essential workers that are out there on the front lines doing the things that you need to do, we're lifting you up and we're thank thanking God for uh, your life and thanking God for the sacrifice and thanking God that you're on the front lines doing what you need to do. All the healthcare workers, EMT, police officers, all the essential workers, restaurants, uh, all the things that are, that are uh, going on in our city. Uh, we're about to transition into some things and I I pray, God, I pray that we are at a, at a point that we are good. Uh, not only that, but we are at a point that we can uh, we can do the things that we need to do and come from not a natural normal, but to a greater normal. So I want you to be in prayer. I want you to be in agreement. I want you to be safe. I want you to be healthy. I want you to be smart. I want you to be wise. And once again, we're not going to be in fear, but we're going to stand in faith. And those that are not operating in faith, I'm going to ask you to operate in wisdom and faith. That means go out get a mask, get gloves, do whatever you need to do, protect yourself. And we want you, we want the people got to be healthy. We want you to be healthy. All right, listen, uh, we're going to go into our Bible study uh, tonight. Uh, God has given me something different and a different spin of faith. And I pray that you have your word with you as we go into the word of God just quickly. Um, in addition, don't forget, uh, once again, we want to give unto God how God has given unto us. And they're going to put the Put the give up there onto our website uh, concerning our website is www.lrc-indy.org slash give. So don't forget, because last week, last week was not too good on the giving. So I ask all of you that are watching, all of you that may not be a part of our ministry, uh, go to our website. We ask that you just give a monetary gift. If it's $5, $10, $15, $20, $20, whatever that gift that you have to sow into the ministry, please give that gift. We want to continue to strive and do the things we need to do, such as virtual online uh, Bible study and our worship on Sunday. We want to continue to maintain God's house. And I trust you. And I, I, I know without a shadow of a doubt, if you trust God with your giving, he will bless you abundantly beyond anything that you can imagine. So I want you to give on tonight as we're as I'm going to this Bible study. And then once again, we'll come back to it at the end of our teaching on tonight. All right. So let's get let's jump into it. Uh, let's go to let's go to some familiar passage of scripture. I preached actually from this. Um, but I preached from the uh, the other part of the scriptures from Mark 11. It's Mark the 11th chapter. And we're actually what we're going to do is we're going to take one scripture and we're going to exegete. Exegete means we're going to exit out. We're going to pull out. We're going to extract uh, some revelation and truth out of this one particular scripture. We don't need anything else. Uh, but this is the scripture and this is the chapter where Jesus uh, spoke to the fig tree and it withered. But in the element of that, we're not going to go to that particular story, but there was some there was some revelation. There was a higher level of level of revelation that God that Jesus gave God and then Jesus gave it to the disciples. So let's go to once again, let's go to Mark, the 11th chapter and is verse 24. And it reads, therefore, I say unto you, check this out, what things soever ye desire there's three elements to this. When you pray, believe that he received them and he shall have them. Okay. So whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them. That's those, those, those three things and you shall have them. So tonight I want to talk about three dimensional faith. I want to talk about three dimensional faith. All right. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We adore you so much for the opportunity to go into this word. I pray that you will use my tongue as a teaching tool. I pray that our minds, my minds, our hearts and spirits are open to receive the revelation of a new level of faith, God, that you're going to bring into the element of what we're speaking about on tonight. 
I ask now, oh God, that you go into every home, go into every car, go into every job, every person that is watching online or watching virtual, however they may be watching this, we ask now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you give us a new, a new revelation of faith. Give us a new understanding of faith. Give us the, the three-dimensional aspect of faith as we go into this word. And I ask now, God, that you use my mind, my heart, and sink it together, that I will be able to glorify you and let no flesh go in your sight. And we thank you, God, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. I say, we say, amen. All right. Okay, so I'm ready. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it, y'all. Let's do it. Okay, so in this particular chapter, once again, as I explained, uh, this is the post experience of Jesus speaking to the fig tree and it withering, you know, it withered. So now in the aspect of this, the, the disciples said unto them, he said, um, Peter calling, uh, remember, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree, which thou cursed, is it withered away? And Jesus answered, seven, saying, saying unto them, have faith in God. So Jesus is bringing us in a new revelation of faith in a different perspective. Okay, so if you really think about it, as many times we have talked about faith, we have talked about faith in so many angles. And so when I said that, when I was thinking about that, and I was saying we've been talking about faith, faith in so many angles, I go back into the aspects of high school when I was teaching, when I was actually not teaching, but I was being taught um, geometry. And one of the things that we were taught in angles, you know, we, geometry is all about angles, three dimensions and different things and what have you. So the thing of it is, is that the angle that we are venturing into is called three dimensional faith. So and Jesus, once again, Jesus said, have faith in God. So having faith in God is a dimensional level that requires trust that is not normal. I got to say that again. So having faith in God is a dimensional faith. It's a dimensional faith that requires trust that is not normal. Okay, so what are you trying to say, Pastor? In so many words is this. The normal trust that I would normally have for a normal situation calls for normal faith. But when there is a situation that calls me to have abnormal faith, that means a higher level of faith. That means I have to have a higher level of revelation. And Jesus is giving us a higher level of revelation concerning this particular, this particular, uh, particular verse. So having faith in God requires a higher level of faith. Okay. Our faith has power to manifest that which we require. Check this out. Or it has the power to to dismiss that we which that, that we don't want. Okay, let me say that again. So faith has the power to manifest that which we require, and it also has the power to dismiss that we don't the things that we don't want. So in the aspects of this, Jesus was giving something to them, such as this. He came. He he encountered the fig tree. He spoke faith through the power of revelation. And he spoke it because there was nothing that was being produced on the fig tree. So guess what? Because there was nothing being produced by faith, he dismissed it. Okay. By faith, he dismissed it. So we have to come to an understanding that when we have faith in God, as the Bible declares in Mark, in this Mark 11 verse 24, and going back to verse 22, we must have a higher level of faith. And I'm going to get to, to the three dimensions. I just got to have to set this up a little bit. So to better understand the verse, that is the topic of discussion. We must be able to have a dimensional faith that is enjoined, check this out, with substance or something that God can use. I got to say that again. Okay. When we're talking about dimensional faith, we must have something. We must have something that God can, can uh, or substance or something that God can use. So a lot of times faith cannot stand alone. It has to be enjoined with something that is usable or something that God can identify with. Okay. Okay. So, okay. He has to have something. Okay. When we're talking about faith, when we always th we talk about faith without works is dead. Okay. That's true. But in my works of it, God has to have, he has to see our faith, but he has to see the works that's, that is, that's, 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 that
Okay. These are the th three things that I'm going to break it down to you real quick. But, be but before we go into the three aspects of this, I must understand, I mu must get you to understand that geometry, when we're talking about three dimension, in geometry, in geometry, a three dimensional shape can be defined as a solid figure or an object or shape that has three dimensions. In other words, sometimes what we call length, width, or height. So we're not going to use that, but we're going to use the three dimensions. So shape. So the shape of a dimension or the shape of faith dimension is faith itself. That's the shape. But at the same time, when we're having faith as it is, there is a three-part dimension that is attached to faith. I hope you get that. So where I'm about to break this down, we're going to go into the scripture and I'm about to break this down real quick for you. I'm telling you, God, when God gave me this word, it really kind of gave me a different higher level, uh, level of revelation concerning faith. So let's go to the scripture. And it said, therefore, I say unto you, this is the first aspect. What things soever ye desire. So if you're taking notes, the first level, the first dimension of the first piece of faith, of this three-dimensional faith is desire, okay? So it's not the same as what we say, the, the essential things when I desire something or I crave something. It's not the aspect of that, you know? When we get hungry, sometimes we got that crave, you want to go to White House and you want to get some burgers. Or if you got a crave or something, when you desire something, you want something. But in the translation of desire, it is said to call for. So when I'm with what whatsoever things or whatever whatsoever things or whatsoever things soever ye desire, let's put that into context. So whatever so things I call for. So the things that I call for is another level of faith. So a strong desire or need of faith is when we're calling for things that we hope for. God is looking for the request, but the request has to line up with his will and his timing. So the things that I call for is not necessarily the things that I want because not necessarily the things I desire because a lot of times the things I want is not what I need. Okay, I got that. The things that I want is not always what I need. And sometimes the things I need is not always what I want. But we have to be able to get into the will of God because when we get into the will of God, that means now I am in alignment with what God wants for my life. I'm in alignment with the destiny that he has preordained or predestined concerning what God has for me in my faith. Now, the thing of it is, is that when I call for it, that means that I have to call for those things that's in alignment with my destiny. So whatever things I call for. So when I call for it, that means God recognized the call. That means he recognizes my request because now he identifies that now the thing that I've, I have called for is now in alignment with his will. So what did I say before? What did I say earlier in that is that God is looking for something that is usable, but also he's looking for something that is identified, that he can identify with. And so a lot of times the reason why we have frustrations in our life, the reason why we have so many different situations that we come across and we're praying for, we're, we're asking for this, we're asking for that, and we're trying to get this done, we're trying to get that done, is because is it, po is it possible that what you have been praying for has not been in alignment or something that God has not identified. <laughs> I pray y'all got that. The reason I have been in situations uh, prior to that, even before I became a pastor and different things like that, I was asking God for this. I was asking for God for that and everything else. And I never understood why I didn't get it. It's because God did not identify that for my life. He did not identi identify that for my destiny, that person, that relationship that I wanted, or that car, that house, that money, that job, or that situation that I desired, that was not an, in, in the alignment of his will. So that's the reason why we get so frustrated is because he said, whatsoever things you call for, but you have to call for those things that is according to his will. 
So if it's not in his word, it is not in his will. And if it's not in his will, it's not in his word. So you got to get into his word to get his will to get what you want. My God from Zion, I pray that y'all got that. You got to get into his word to get into his will to get what you want. That's then you can ask what you will because you're asking it in his word. And the reason why those things that haven't worked out, the reason why you have so much frustration is because you're not asking for those things in his word. And then check this out, because the Bible said, the, Jesus said, he said, whatever you ask in my name. See, when's the last time you asked God for something in his name? And then it was in his will, and then it was in his word. I hope y'all got that. When's the last time you asked for something and you ask it because it was in his will and it was in his word? A lot of times we don't ask it. The reason why we get frustrated, the reason why we don't get that job is because we didn't ask it because it was not according to his will and it was not according to his word. So you have to be in alignment. So whatever desire, that's the first thing you have to be in alignment. So when we come into the alignment, that's when we can ask. Therefore, through faith, our needs are manifest, manifested by the will and the timing that we have in God. Jesus was revealing through his word that the power of the tongue is elevated by faith or in the belief in the one that possessed it. So check this out. So in, in, in so many words, when I was looking up the, the, the definition or the Greek translation of desire, it says to call for, but then it also gave me a different, a different revelation as well. It says that we also have to believe in the one that has possession. So when I when I have a desire, it's not just that the fact that I also have a, 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 a elevation of believing his word and his will and asking it in Jesus name, but I also have to believe in the one that has possession of it. I pray that helps you. I pray that helps you. I pray that helps you. Everybody say desire, desire, desire. So my desire is not a lust desire. It's not a flesh desire. And that's where our faith has to come in. Because a lot of times we align faith with the natural aspects of what, what of earthly goods. And sometimes faith is not predicated on the natural. Faith is predicated on what is spiritual. Therefore, if I don't see it, even though I may not see it, I may see it not in the natural, but I may be able to see it in the spirit. And when I see it in the spirit, now it would manifest in the natural because I'm not praying from the natural. I'm praying from the spirit in faith. I hope y'all get that in faith. So my desire is not a flesh desire. My desire is the spirit connecting to God's spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, allowing me to go and ask him whatever call for those things by his word, by his will. Then it will come into the manifestation of what I've been asking for. So let's continue on. I think that was good. I think that was real good right there. I think that was real good. Okay. So. We're going to continue to break down the scriptures. So it says, once again, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. We already talked about that. Dimension number two, three dimensional faith, three dimensional. We're on dimension number two. So take the top. Whatsoever things are ye when ye pray, whatsoever thing you desire when ye pray. Okay. Woo. Check this out. Okay. So prayer, 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 prayer. So prayer in the aspects of a lot of you may, may understand prayer, you know what the aspects of prayer may be. So I'm going to break this down in the contents of this particular passage of scripture. OK, the essential communication required to speak to God. So prayer, we already know that's the essential communication that is required to speak to our almighty God. The prayers of those that believe are elevated. Check this out. The prayers of those that believe in God, because what did Jesus say? He said, have faith in God. So when I believe in God, they're elevated from the natural to the spirit realm where God dwells. So in order for me to connect to God, I have to utilize my natural aspect of who I am, the natural state of who I am to go to where God is. 
God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Too many times we try to go to God in our flesh and that's not where God dwells. We have to go from the natural to the spirit because that's where God dwells. And so when we pray, how can know, how can God know what we're praying for? How can God know what we desire? How can God know what our request if we are not praying? The Bible says, make your request known unto God. So how can we, how can God know what you're praying for? Dimensional faith, dimensional faith, three-dimensional faith. How can he know if you're not praying? You believe God, trust, you have a desire, but you're missing an element. You ain't praying. I know it's not good English. <laughs> no, I know it's not good English. But, but, but if you have a desire, you have a need, you're trying to meet the will of God. You're trying to be in the word of God. You're trying to be in the plan of God, but you're not praying. That means that you're not praying in the natural aspect. You're praying in the spirit. So how can God know what we're calling for? That's a desire. When, my, when I have a desire, that means I'm calling for something. And if there is no spiritual communication in the mix of what we're needing, we are missing the el we're missing one element. So prayer took this out. So I got to get y'all to understand, and I'm, I'm great. Jump into this real quick. The aspects of, of prayer. I'm about to give you another, another different revelation, because what did I say? In order to go to another dimension in faith, you have to hide, have a higher revelation of faith. So get from the aspects of the normalcy of prayer. Get from the aspects of that. Okay, you know what? My father in, in Jesus name, I've come before you now, God, you know, that you will bless my house, that you bless my home, that you will bless my children, that you keep my job, that you keep my money. You know, that's a normal, that's a normal aspect of prayer. But we have to get to a different revelation of prayer. So check this out. Prayer in the Greek, in this particular passage of scripture, it says to translate in this, in this word, it says to, it means to offer. It means to worship. Okay, so, and when I'm praying, check this out. When we pray, the first thing, I don't know about many of you, but when my wife and I pray, the first thing we do, we, we worship. When I worship, that means I'm offering up worship. I'm offering up honor. I'm giving him respect. I'm giving him what he wants. I'm giving him what he needs. He wants to hear from his creation to the creator how, how we love him, how we adore him, how we magnify him in all of his splendor, he, all of his ways, that he is excellent, that he is El Shaddai, he is Jehovah God, he is uh, Taniskanu, he is our, 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 our refuge, he is our strength, he is our tower, he is our protector, he is, our, see, when you start giving him what he is due, that means you're offering up worship, you're offering up something to him. Therefore, when we offer up honor and when we give God what is due to him, guess what? Now God in essence gives us what we need from him. So you cannot give God something or you cannot, you cannot expect anything from God and you give God nothing. So in the element of my prayer, it's once again, it says what things soever ye desire one, that's the first dimension of prayer when you pray. So when I'm praying, when I have, when I'm calling for something in my th three dimensional aspect of faith, when I'm calling for it, I also have to pray. That means I'm giving him honor. I'm offering up something to him to get his attention. Okay. So check this out. When, when in a three dimensional movie, when you're watching 3D, when you put on your 3D glasses, a lot of times what happens? The aspects of the 3D dimension is that the fact that if you don't have your glasses on, it, it, it seems very blurry to the point that it, it, it becomes so nerve wracking that you have to get the You have to put the glasses on to be able to see in a different element. <laughs> I pray I get that to see in a different element. So when I see in a different element now, the pit, not only that the picture becomes clear, but now the things start coming at me. And so when I pray to God, I'm offering up worship. I'm offering up honor. So I'm throwing things at him because when we think, look at things in 3D, when we, when things coming at us in 3D, we respond, we reflect, we react to those things and we jump. So here's the thing. When I offer up God, when I offer up those things to God in my 3D dimension of faith, Guess what? When I offer it up to him, he has no other choice but to react to those things that I've given him. My God. 
And when I do that, now God gets, I get God's attention. Just like in that 3D movie, all of a sudden th something jumps at you. Guess what? It's got your attention. And that's what God is saying in my prayer, in our prayer. God is wanting us to offer something up to him so we can get his attention. That's the aspect. That's the second aspect. So, so when I'm praying, it's not just my normal prayer. It's not the normalcy of my prayer. It's just not, I'm just praying just to pray. No, I want to get, I want to offer something up to him so I can, when's the last time you offered up something to him? When's the last time that you gave God what he wanted in your prayer? When's the last time you said something to him, to him in, in your prayer that you got his attention? That's another dimension of faith. So that's the set. That's the level. That's level number two in our dimension of faith. So we're almost done, y'all. We're almost done. So then he said, then once again, therefore, I say to you, what things soever ye desire, one, when you pray, oh, here we go, believe that you receive them. So that's the third dimension of faith. Okay. So belief is the conclusion of the third dimension of faith. So though, check this out. The word believe translates is to, to think to it to be true. <laughs> My God. Okay. So I have a desire. I'm calling for something that I need, but I have to go to the will of God because the will of God is the word of God and the word of God is, sub, is, is the divine will of God. So I know when I have a need, that means I have desire. So I'm calling for those things. And then when I'm calling for those things, now I'll go into the aspects of prayer. So I believe God, I trust God. I give him, I give God what he wants. I offer up worship. I give him all the accolades. I give him all the honor. I give him all the glory. I tell him who he is. Now I got his attention. Now he's looking for the third will of of my dimension of faith. He's looking for me to call that thing to be true. My God, he's calling for us to say that now that I've called it, now that I've prayed about it, now I'm looking for that thing to be true. That's the belief in God. He said, because he said right here in the scripture, if you look at it, he said, believe that it shall receive it and you shall have it. <laughs> so when I call, when I believe that thing, when I receive it now, when now I'm able to receive it because I'm believe it to think it to be true or check this out. The other translation is to entrust the thing into one's hands. So now the thing of it is, is that even though I may not have it in my hands, God has it in his hands. So I have to know that if it's not manifested in the natural, God has it in the spirit. So I have to be able to believe and to think it to be true in his hands. And then therefore it's going to be transferred from his hands to my hands. I hope I'm teaching them tonight. But the problem in the body of Christ is that we're so inconsistent with our faith. We're so inconsistent with our faith. One minute we're good, next minute we're not. Next minute we believe, the next minute we're not. The next minute we're frustrated, the next minute we're not. We're so inconsistent in the level of faith. That's the reason why we have to, ele we have to elevate our faith. We have to go to another dimension and revelation of faith. Too many times that, that we're thinking of a thing that when, when we want something, we desire something, we need something. God says that I'm able to give it to you, but there has to be a three dimensional thing. You have to call it. You have to pray about it. Then you have to believe it. That means think it to be true. Even though, and then here's the thing. It also has to come into the, into his timing. Can you imagine that if God gave you a million dollars, God gave you a, a, a plethora of money, but you didn't have wisdom or stewardship to be able to retain your money, you would be broke within six months. It's all about timing. Is it possible that God has taken us through the elements of teaching and development and processes to get us to a place where he can trust us? Get us to a place that he can trust us with certain things that, that we pray for. Because I know back in the day that if I asked God when I was a young man, if I had, had asked God for a million dollars and God gave it and, and I was like, okay, God, I know you're able to give it to me. But here's the thing. The problem is, is that I was too young. I was to, at, at an adolescent age. I was too young to be able to know how to deal with it. 
I was too young not to be able to know how to invest it. Now in my season age, and I'm God, I bless you that you give me a million dollars. Now that I'm at my season age, now I'm able to handle it and have more wisdom because now I wouldn't have been, I probably would have been broken six months or a year if God gave me that kind of money because I didn't have the wisdom. So that's what I'm saying in this is that you have to believe that he's able to give it to you and you're able to receive it, but you have to have the three-dimensional aspect of faith. That means that your faith cannot be normal, that you have to have a different revelation of faith in order to, be, to receive this three-dimensional aspect of faith. So once again, the wavering, the wavering levels of our faith is not what God is looking for. If I can't handle in the natural what God is telling me to do, therefore, I must go back to verse 22. He said, have faith in God. Now, Jesus said this. Jesus said, have faith in God. Four words, have faith in God. He said that the fact that it, even if in those moments that your natural flesh will not line up with your spirit, you got to have faith in God. So we can't trust our flesh to get us to this place of faith. We can, you cannot trust your flesh. You cannot trust the natural aspect of who you are to, to maintain this new revelation of faith, this three-dimensional three aspect of faith. You can't trust your flesh because we already know what the Bible says, the flesh is always going to war against the spirit. Now, we already know that in the, in the aspect of Romans 8, it's always going to have a war. So here's the thing, is that in those days that you're feeling down in your spirit, you cannot base your faith and put your kickstand down in the aspect of your flesh. You have to allow your flesh or your flesh to come to subjection to your spirit man to tell your spirit man, listen, I have to have authority over my natural man because in those aspects, God is not looking for me in my natural. He's looking for me in the spirit. So he has to he has to come to an aspect to, to identify with something that he can work with. And so when he come, when he looks for you, he can look for something to say, you know what? I can work with that brother. I can work with that sister. I can work with them because they got another level of faith. So when he's able to see what you have in the spirit, now he's able to manifest that thing that you've asked for. Hmm. So God is calling for a three-dimensional faith, uh, element of faith, that when we desire a thing, we now can go to another level. Three-dimensional faith. Three-dimensional faith. Have faith in God. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who this word would be for. I don't know in the aspects of what you're dealing with, my brother and my sister, and how the things that are, that are manifesting in your life I pray that you would take this word and really, really gravitate to it because God is calling for us in a different season. He's calling for us in a different element. He's calling for us in a different revelation. And, and Jesus gave us a different revelation on, on this aspect of faith. Check this out. Once again, God needs something that he can identify in order for him to work the faith. How can he work something and work with you if you have nothing to work with? You cannot expect God to do all the work and you do nothing. You cannot expect God to give you a blessing and do this and do that and all the things that you desire. You see, a lot of times what happens is we got the one, but we don't have the two. You know what the one is? We call for a thing. That's the one thing we got, but we don't have no prayer and we don't have no belief. God cannot work in the aspects of that. He cannot work, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He works in three. He works with trying you. He works in the aspects of three. On, on the third day, what Jesus said, on the third day, I will rise again. He works in the aspects of three. So he needs something to identify. He cannot work with one without working with all three. We got the dots. We got the desire that all we can, we can call it all day. I can call this to to manifest it. I can call this to fruition. I can call this out. I can call that out. We can call for a thing, but when you call for a thing, you got to pray about it. But then after you get off your knees, you got to be you got to come to the aspect to say to yourself to think it to be true or to entrust in the one that has it in his hands. You looking for that job? You call it. You prayed about it. You offer up what God wants. And then after that, now you say this is to be true because now that's not, that's not flesh. 
that spirit. So beloved on tonight, listen, I pray that this dimensional faith, this three dimensional faith will get you to the point that you can get God's attention. Because what did I say in that movie? When you're watching that 3D, you got your 3D glasses on and everything. And this, that movie, that whatever that situation, that action scene is coming at you, you flick, you jump, you react. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for the type of faith that's going to make him jump. That's going to make him react to a, no other choice to have a manifestation in the lives of God's people. That's the kind of the three-dimensional faith that God is looking for. Listen, so... This is my Bible study on tonight. I didn't, I, you know, I'm not a long teacher, but I love teaching the word of God. But listen, as we said before, I want you to give tonight whatever God has blessed you with. If it's a $5 seed, $10 seed, $20 seed, $25 seed, I want you please to go into our website. We still have to maintain the house of God. We still have to give. We still have to do what, what is called for us to do. We have to be good stewards of God's kingdom and his house. We still have to maintain. So when we do come back together, we don't want to come back to a normal. We want to come back to a greater normal and a greater revelation of faith. So once again, my, my friends, my, my, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, thank you all for watching. But I definitely want you to give unto tonight. Whatever you have on your person to give, please give. Give unto God how God has, has blessed you, how God has given unto you. And I pray that this Bible study has blessed you on tonight that is giving you a different revelation of faith, that is giving you a different aspect of what God is requiring from us. You cannot give him one without giving him the other. Desire, prayer, and to believe that you're able to receive it, to think it to be true, all right? So once again, thank you. Join us again. Join us right here on our channel, on our page, our Facebook page, as well as our YouTube channel. We want you to come and worship with us on Sunday. God is, I'm pretty sure God is going to give me another word for this, this first Sunday as we're going to worship him in spirit and in truth. So join us at the 1145 hour, a.m. hour. And I ask all of you, subscribe to our YouTube page. Follow us on Facebook. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you comment. Make sure you, you say something that will encourage and inspire somebody. Share this word. If you're on our YouTube, uh, YouTube channel, share the word. Share, 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 share. Get somebody to subscribe to our channel. If it's on Facebook, also share the word with somebody. Somebody needs to hear this word. Somebody needs to be encouraged and enlightened and inspired by the word of God. So, beloved, on tonight, God bless you. I pray that the blessings of God will continue to follow you and chase you down that you would continue to elevate your level of faith and the revelation of what God is trying to do with the lives of his people. Once again, three-dimensional faith. You got to have the desire to call for it. You got to pray. You got to offer up something to God. And then thirdly, you got to believe. You got to think it to be true and then also entrust that thing into one's hands, which is God himself. Beloved, God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you right here on 11, 11.45 hour on our Sunday worship. God bless you. We'll see you soon.